It all came to a head here on a Sunday evening in February, just three months after he won a historic fourth term, embattled Governor John Kitzhaber summoned his most loyal advisors here to Mahonia Hall to discuss whether he should resign. Gathered around the mansion's dining room table, the team came to the stunning conclusion, Kitzhaber was done. After three months of near constant bad publicity and revelations about Oregon First Lady Sylvia Hayes, he was damaged goods. He could no longer govern. Kitzhaber finally agreed. But he swiftly changed his mind the next day, and the next, and the next. As Oregonians watched the political intrigue spellbound, Kitzhaber kept waffling. It was a stunning contrast from just 90 days earlier when Kitzhaber comfortably won re-election. Even then, though, the seeds of Kitzhaber's destruction had been sown. Hayes' consulting contracts raised questions about whether she was profiting off of her relationship. Startling revelations about Hayes' past, a sham marriage, plans for a pot farm, gave the story legs. Hayes confirmed it all and apologized in a tearful press conference. When he assembled his inner circle, Kitzhaber brought together some of the savviest political heavyweights in the state. Among them was his longtime advisor, Patricia McKegg, and Portland political consultant, Mark Wiener. None were shrinking violets. Some were notoriously outspoken. But how do you tell the boss his significant other has become politically toxic? How do you convince the boss that to help himself politically, he needs to disclose documents that could incriminate his fiance? The debate raged through December and January Kitzhaber's lawyers, including high-powered Portland attorney Jim McDermott, argued that this was now a serious legal matter. The governor and Hayes needed to protect themselves. On Hayes's behalf, the lawyers filed a legal brief with the Oregon Government Ethics Commission, arguing the commission had no jurisdiction over Hayes because she was not a public official. Kitzhaber was inaugurated on January 12th. Hayes was by his side. The month went rapidly downhill from there. Hayes herself leaked the news of another $118,000 consulting contract that had not been previously disclosed. As the Oregonian reported, the income appeared to be more than what Hayes reported on her returns, which raised the new issue of possible tax fraud. Kitzhaber tried to do damage control at a January 30th press conference. He seemed shaky and evasive, refusing to answer any questions about taxes. The last week began with the Sunday evening Mahonia Hall meeting and Kitzhaber's decision to resign. He reversed course the next day after talking to his lawyers. Tuesday was marked by the painful defection of longtime political allies. Both Senate President and Peter Courtney and Speaker of the House Tina Kotek told him privately the Hayes scandal was impairing his legislative agenda. Resignation was again on the table. The rest of the week brought more of the same. On Thursday, Kitzhaber was blasted publicly by Courtney and Kotek, as well as Secretary of State Kate Brown and Treasurer Ted Wheeler. Brown had flown back to Oregon from Washington, D.C at Kitzhaber's request, expecting the governor was going to quit and hand her the reins. It didn't happen. Kitzhaber had flip-flopped again. She released a statement that seemed to raise questions about Kitzhaber's mental state. Finally, key members of the governor's senior staff, worn down by the months of turmoil, informed him that if he intended to remain in office, he would fight that fight without them. Kitzhaber again decided to resign. This time the decision stuck. He retreated to his private office in the Capitol to gather his things. His office made it official the next day, just afternoon. Kitzhaber's nearly four decades as a dominant player in Oregon politics were over. Near the end of the disastrous January 30th press conference, a reporter yelled from the back of the room, were you blinded by love? Kitzhaber answered, I'm in love. As Kitzhaber's political situation worsened, his political handlers frantically urged him to distance himself from Hayes, or better yet, end the relationship altogether. Kitzhaber finally came to agree it was the right political strategy, but he wouldn't do it. Instead, he gave up the most powerful position in the state. Whether it was out of love or loyalty or some other motivation, only he knows.